hey, you know what? I just ran across this Navistar super truck. You know what they did? They doubled the fuel economy and the freight efficiency. Yeah, and that's coming right up. Well, we're at the 2018 SAE World Congress, uh, and I'm here in the Emerson booth, but this is a Navistar super truck, and this is Dean Opperman, right? And he is the chief engineer of this project. How in the world did you accomplish doubling the fuel efficiency and the freight efficiency? How'd you do that? So there are a lot of technologies that went into the Navistar super truck. As part of a government-funded uh, program, a uh, partially funded program, I should say, uh, for the super truck program by the DOE, uh, we were able to investigate a lot of technologies that aren't quite ready for production, but they will be in the very near future. Um, so how did we get there, you asked? We got there in a number of ways. There was a lot of different technologies uh, on this vehicle. The most notable are the aerodynamic improvements that were made that roughly um, reduced the aerodynamic drag of a Class A line haul truck by 50%. Um, that went directly to our fuel economy numbers. Most obvious in the uh, in the aerodynamic drag reduction areas is the absence of rear view mirrors. Um, we've replaced the significantly sized rear view mirrors of a Class A truck with cameras, um, which have a number of benefits, including improved NVH and visibility. Um, we, with a restyled hood and um, wedge shape to the design to try and get to that uh, box shape of the, of the trailer, we were also able to uh, reduce the drag of the wind going around the sides. Uh, we also have a polycarbonate windshield, uh, significantly stronger, um, which allows the air to maintain attachment across the A-pillar and across the side glass as well, all improving the fuel economy. But that's not, not, not all. We also took a lot of um, losses out of the engine as well. Uh, we improved the um, brake thermal efficiency of the Navistar 13 liter engine uh, to over 49 percent. That's a significant reduction, more than 15 versus a standard uh, today uh, engine of today of that size. Uh, there's a, a, a number of other unique uh, features. We are doing some electrification. Uh, unfortunately, with line haul applications, um, going to a hybrid isn't really the, ne the best uh, approach because the amount of stops and goes that you have and the amount of opportunity to recover that energy is very minimal. A Class A line haul truck driver will get on the expressway and drive 65 miles an hour for hours and hours and hours. So it's not really the, the type of it. So what we've done is we said, okay, we want to still recover some of that energy and we do that in the form of a micro hybrid, a 48 volt micro hybrid. So when we went to 48 volts um, and, and recaptured some of that energy, it opened up a lot of opportunities to electrify some of the subsystems. Um, so those subsystems include the HVAC system, which we're going to talk a little bit more about and why Emerson is here today, um, to electrify the HVAC system so we're no longer pulling that parasitic off of the engine. We, we can now do it in a more economical way as far as energy is concerned. Um, a couple other unique features is the, the right height control. We call it pitch control. We actually change the right height of the vehicle as a function of speed, vehicle speed. Um, as everyone probably knows, aerodynamics at lower speeds doesn't really play that big of a role, but at higher speeds it does. So what we actually do is we drop the front of the tractor and we drop the trailer to try and form um, basically a wing or an airfoil across the top of the vehicle. We've seen significant reduction in, in uh, in aerodynamic drag that way. Um, to do that, we have a relatively unique composite front suspension, which is air ride over a composite leaf spring on the front that, that gives us our um, adjustment on the front ride height. Um, and then we also have um, ride height control in the rear, which allows us to do what we call reverse load biasing. So typically, we, the systems today have a load bias, biasing characteristic where we will put the um, uh, majority of the load on the drive axle as can, as opposed to the tag axle, once it, uh, which will allow for lower uh, rolling resistance. Um, and then uh, at higher speeds, we then revert that load to that tag axle for lower rolling resistance as well. So um, there is some uh, significant amount of light weighting, uh, 
low, rolling reduction uh, as far as the tire geometry. We have super singles on this vehicle um, with special tread patterns and uh, Michelin um, uh, low rolling resistance tires on it as well. We have a uh, composite uh, drive shaft on this, so uh, the first um, composite only uh, drive shaft as well as uh, the tallest rear axle ratio ever put on a vehicle like this and driven on the expressway which drives the engine speed down to about a thousand rpm at, uh, at at cruise speeds so I'll give you a couple nuggets of, of uh, interesting information um, this vehicle at 65,000 pounds cruises at about 80 horsepower 80 horsepower, 65,000 pounds. That's because of the low rolling resistance and the aerodynamic drag opportunities. Awesome, just absolutely awesome. So um, I gotta ask you before you go, um, where can folks get more information about uh, Super Truck or the things that you would like them to know? So, yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Um, there is a lot of literature out there. So uh, type in any browser, the Navistar Super Truck, there is a significant amount. Uh, you can go to the DOE website as well. Uh, there is information there. It is, it is public, uh, a lot of the information and, and what we've done with this vehicle. Okay, awesome. And we'll put some links to that in the video description down below, so, so check that out. Don't forget to comment and ask some questions in case these guys look at the video from time to time <laughs> yep. and can answer those questions that you might have.